From National Geographic Films comes Free Solo, the incredible story of Alex Honnold, who is an expert mountaineer who travels the world finding the most dangerous climbs. But he's about to meet his biggest challenge yet, free climbing, free solo, El Capitan from Yosemite National Park. And Alex joins me right now, along with directors Jimmy Chin and his wonderful wife, Elizabeth. Hey, guys. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> Greetings from Las Vegas. Yeah, that's my home. I saw that in the documentary. You moved here last year. Thank you for moving here and welcome to Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I have to admit, guys, going into this film, I thought climbing a mountain, how exciting can that be? And I'm telling you, I was on the edge of my seat. I was going crazy with excitement because, Alex, every step you took up that mountain with no ropes could be your last. And also, the documentary is well-balanced. We went into Alex's backstory, his passion for climbing mountains, his personal life. It all came together. It was really, really an amazing accomplishment. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy that it plays that way for you because that was always our hope, was that you could get to know Alex and he had such a rich character and also just become invested in the story. Um, so yeah, that's great. I'm happy you had that experience. <laughs> So Alex, tell me about your first meeting with Jimmy and Elizabeth. Tell me how it came to be that they wanted to record your incredible ascent on El Capitan. Yeah, well, so they were coming off the, the success of the previous film, Meru, and, uh, and I'd seen that film and it, and it was amazing. And so when they approached me about maybe making a, a feature documentary together, um, I saw it as a big opportunity. And then at the same time, I'd been sort of dreaming about climbing El Cap for, for many years, and I sort of needed a little bit of something you know a little impetus to like get me started on the process to actually start putting in the work and and actually hopefully do the climb um, because it'd been something that i've been dreaming about but not actually working toward and so when they approached me about making the film it seemed like a perfect way to sort of combine forces and, and do this thing that i've been wanting to do now jimmy directing this film i can't imagine the red tape when it comes to the federal government the bureau of land management the national park service so tell me about the relationships and how you accomplished to get permission to shoot in Yosemite National Park for this documentary. Well, we were very fortunate because we have a great uh, producing crew and, you know, that's, that's part of what being a great uh, producer is about is kind of staying ahead of the game and making sure everybody's informed and, you know, the park service was great. Uh, I think they liked the fact that, you know, we followed all the rules crossed all our T's, dotted all our I's. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think in general we have a really good relationship with the Park Service. I mean, I've been spending many months every year in Yosemite and, and, uh, and have tried to be a good steward for the park as, as much as I can. I mean, you know, we have nothing but respect for, for the National Park yeah, Service. Yeah, we love the National Park. Yeah. Now, Elizabeth, being a director on this documentary, it's important to capture the moment because without the moment about the whole point of this documentary, there's no movie. But you had to have a special kind of film crew that wouldn't distract Alex as he's climbing the side of El Capitan. So tell me about the balance of getting that moment and the danger too. Um, between the filmmaking and, and the action? Well, I think it was, just became very important to us to include the questions we were grappling with as filmmakers because, you know, our guys were training alongside Alex and we kind of became part of the story. And it was also another way of allowing audiences like, to, to understand what we were feeling and, and how to feel about what Alex was doing. So, you know, it was a careful balance, just doing just enough and, you know, not wanting to take away from the, this incredible achievement, but kind of helping the story along. So Alex, throughout the film and all your different climbs of all the different mountains in the documentary, you, we're seeing you eat this power breakfast. And I was just like, what, what does he eat before he makes this climb up the mountain? Because you can't be lethargic, but you need your energy. So tell me, what's your secret formula? No, no. I mean, for me, the, the key thing was to eat the same thing as every other morning, you know, basically to, to make it feel like normal routine. So uh, yeah, at the time, I was having a breakfast of muesli and fruit and, you know, hemp milk, just like a very simple, basic muesli breakfast. Uh, but, you know, mostly because I was trying to stay routine. It was, I was trying to make it feel just like every other day I felt. So, Alex, you know, you're not the only one who's climbed El Capitan that's been in the movies. You know, Captain Kirk climbed the side of El Capitan in Star Trek V, Undiscovered Country. So you're in good company. And there's also those great Mr. Spock quotes in the documentary, too. I love it. That's true, he did. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a big inspiration. We love that yeah. clip. <laughs> it's awesome. And then he falls and Spock catches him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, Alex, all through the documentary, they kept showing you on all these different magazine covers. Which was your favorite magazine cover to be on? Oh, Vegas Weekly, of course. You know, <laughs> I was like, that's like a softball. You just like lob that up for me to knock out of the park. <laughs> yeah. 
the Las Vegas Weekly. That's a very good answer now that you're a citizen of Las Vegas. Now, in the documentary, when you decided to make that, that climb up El Capitan for real without any ropes, it seems like in the documentary you just kind of went unannounced. You just got up at four in the morning and just started, you know, heading to the mountain. Did you give anybody a heads up? No, no, I, no, I definitely told them when we were when I was going. I mean, it, you know, it takes a lot of effort for for the camera crew to hike all the way to the top of El Cap and then rappel in and get get situated with cameras. I mean, they they did a great job of insulating me from from all of the the preparation that they had to do. But still, I knew that they needed some warning, you know. So so. Uh, the day before, I was I sort of told them, you know, very casually, like, "Oh, I think I'm going to go tomorrow. You know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see." And they kind of knew that that meant that I was going, and so, the, you know, they were in position, they were ready. But um, but it's not as if I wanted to sneak out and do it without them. You know, I, you know, we'd all worked so hard on this project. I I definitely wanted to make sure that everyone was ready. Alex, Jimmy, Elizabeth, congratulations on one of the most exciting moments of the movies this year. Uh, what an incredible accomplishment. I had a great time with it, and congratulations all around. And uh, hey, you know, Alex, I'll see you in Vegas. I will be home soon, and I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited about it. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. All right, for more reviews and interviews, you can surf on over to my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. In Las Vegas, I'm Jeffrey Gay Howard. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.